we miss you terribly and we're, we're always debating and discussing every week how we can start to meet together again because uh, in a church building it's fine to meet up to 30 people um, because it's supposed to be a COVID secure uh, place if all the uh, measurements are in place um, but at homes and outside in private gardens and, and um, in public places like the park and things like that and bars and pubs um, you know it's it's now uh, the rule of six isn't it um, so you know um, we we were sort of preparing for the second wave as it were but I want us to ignore all of that right now and I just want you to focus on something that's so special right now okay this weekend okay this weekend starting from um let's have a look the uh friday the september the 18th sundown um to the end of tonight um is the is the rosh hashanah okay which is also known as the jewish new year all right so um i think it's really important that we uh, look and also gain understanding from the Jewish calendar as well as the Gregorian Roman calendar, okay? Um, because, I mean, uh, being the Gregorian Roman calendar, our new year starts 2021 in, in January. But um, here in September, it's the Jewish new year, and the year is 5,781. So that is the year, 5781. So we're transitioning now. This is, we're at a, you know, a, a kind of a juncture, really. So we're transitioning. This is the head of the new year. This is the start of things. This is, this is a new beginning, all right? And it's time to reflect. In these, in these very, very important days, it leads up to three amazing feasts of the fall. Okay, it starts with Rosh Hashanah. Okay, it starts with the Feast of Trumpet. And then it goes on and on with two other feasts, okay? Yes, feasts, not fasts. <laughs> You'll be happy to <laughs> the opposite, okay? So, yeah, we, you know, like a bear, you know, we're going to go into hibernation, so we've got to <laughs> eat lots, <laughs> okay? So, um, and then in January, we just fast because we just can't go out there and hunt for our meat, <laughs> All right, so here we go. This this is so important. I want you to stay really, really, this is interesting stuff, really interesting stuff. So, you know, um, I, I want to look into, you know, what what the Jews think about this year, um, what it means and everything like that. Um, you up for that? Great. Okay. I just heard yes all across, like, the, the globe. It was just, whew, it was panoramic. Okay, so now... Um, the the year five seven eight one so we're transitioning from five seven eighty to five seven eight one now when you take the hebrew calendar it's a lunar calendar whereas the gregorian calendar or the roman calendar it's a yeah exactly solar calendar okay because lunar means moon and solar means sun okay so hebrew calendar is a lunar calendar and it's a circular calendar it's seasons right it's seasons it's a circular calendar as opposed to uh, the gregorian calendar which is very linear it's it's all about times it's not about seasons see times um happen once and that's it right so first world war second world war blah 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 blah, blah. you know covid19 <laughs> etc okay so um you know my son came up to me he goes mom i, I just saw a really really weird um what do you call them memes i think i'm pronouncing it right okay i think it's it's spelt memes but you know it's it's actually pronounced memes and um memes yeah and so what basically uh he said mum it's so funny someone said uh this is such a gorgeous font for 2020 for such a trash year Anyway, so the, it has not been the nicest years, and life, you know, will never be the same after this year. Um, but what I want to tell you, okay, about the Hebrew calendar is that it is seasons, okay? It's seasons as opposed to times, okay? And when you look at a Hebrew letter, 
Okay, because you see, um, the, 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 they, they, um, see, they don't have numbers as such. You see, everything is a letter, right? So um, if you look at 5781, okay, so th there are four letters there. Basically, it's four letters. I know you're thinking, uh, no, five's a number, uh, seven's a number, eight's a number, one's a the thing is, they're letters and numbers, they're all combined, okay? So 5781 is four letters It makes up this thing, all right? And so when you, when you uh, um, look into the meaning of letters and stuff, you, there are three things, three values to take into consideration. The phonic sound means something. So when you say the word, it, it, it means something. The sound of it. The sound of the letter means something. Numerical value has also a part to play because even though they're letters, they have a numeric value, right? And there is also a prophetic picture that comes into play. How rich is this language, this Hebrew language? It is so rich because one letter Okay, can stand for a sound, and it can stand for a number, and it can stand for a picture. Wow. Whoa! How amazing is that? So when we look at transitioning from 5780 to 5781, we've got to take a picture in mind. We've got to take the sound in mind. We've got to take the numerical value in mind. Wow! Wow! Now, basically, it starts, okay, um, at the first and second uh, day of Tishrei, all right? So Tishrei is the, the month, like um, Sivan is a month, um, and I think Nissan is a month. I know you're all thinking cars, but <laughs> what was it, Nissan? It, was that a brand, or that was a make? Yeah. Is a, it's a, yeah. It's a car manufacturer, right? Like Toyota. It's not a it's not a model, it's a make, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the you know. And um, you know, it's a Jewish month, would you believe it? Yeah. So Tishrei, okay, first and second day of Tishrei is very, very important as it is the head of the year. It is the new year for the Jewish calendar. All right? And that starts at the night. Friday night, all right, and it ends tonight. <laughs> no, the head of the year. Rosh Hashanah is the head of the year, all right? So it's followed by, after that in the Jewish calendar, you've got the Day of Atonement. That means the day of being one with, with God. Okay, atonement means one with God, and we can be one with God through sacrifice, okay? And then there's the Feast of Tabernacles. <clears throat> so even if you don't celebrate or follow Jewish feasts, there is a great prophetic significance to them, right? With much accompanying activity in the heavens, as together these three major fall feasts prophesy or point toward the Lord's second coming, just as the first four major feasts prophesied Jesus' first coming. Does that make sense? So now, the Jewish New Year creates a great opportunity to pause and reflect. Think about it. When it's our New Year, we, uh, most of them, I mean, I used to work in pr uh, production. Um, I was a marketing uh, uh, promotions executive uh, and promotions manager of a publishing company. And so we used to have lots of publishing titles. And each magazine, um, you know, had a, a, a like a flavor for each season, okay? And the number one flavor for the January-February edition was New Year, New You, okay? It, because why? Because it's a time to take stock, isn't it? Like, what have you done? What have you amounted to? I mean, like, some people have been very busy having babies, you know, and some people have been very busy, all right, um, coughing, <laughs> you know, and some people 
um, you know, and we take stock, right? What have we achieved? What, where should we actually be? So, you know, let's make some plans, right? And so, it, you know, the, the Jewish New Year is no different. You know, we, we think of our New Year, we think of, what is it, New Year's resolutions, right? Um, and so this is, this is no different. Here it is, the Jewish New Year, 5781. We're transitioning from 5780 to 5781, right? This is the 5781st year in the Jewish calendar, all right? So now we're going to look more into that. What does 5 mean? What does 7 mean? What does 8 mean? What does 1 mean? What does 57 mean? What does 81 mean? Because you can, there are meanings when you put two of those things together, right? Okay, so... And also, eight is the decade that we're living in. D does that make sense? So like 2020 that we're living in currently is a new decade. What is that, Ethan? It's a new decade. decade, okay? It's a new decade because a decade is every 10 years, right? So when's the next decade in our lifetime? 2030, right? It's a long time to wait. But guess what? We're in a new decade, man. You know, how do we judge music? How do we judge fashion? How do we judge art? It is by the decades, right? In the 70s, you had flower power, peace man, Jesus loves you, peace, you know, all that movement, right? You know, it was the fringe, you know, kind of, you know, that sort of stuff, like kind of um, bell bottoms and flares, um, and the music was a, what was the music? Rock, it was rock, was it? Okay, I thought it was Beatles, was it Beatles? That was 60s, yeah. So it was rock, like sort of Shaken Stevens or something like that maybe. And yes, Led Zeppelin, okay. Wow. Mm. The British Invasion was the 70s. Now, in the 40s, no, no, no. Let's go to the 20s. I think the 20s were called the Roaring 20s. Does anyone know that? Yeah, that's why 2020 is the Roaring 20s, okay? 2020 is 100 years from 1920. 1920 was the Roaring 20s. You had um, Art Deco. You had, um, what's that famous, um, you know, the film with all the kids in it? Tallulah and blah, blah, blah. What's that? No. My name is Tallulah. Dab, deep, dab, da, dee, da. That one. <coughs> so you had flapper dresses. You had flapper headbands, you know. And um, uh, I think it was B, B, B something. Um, okay. Anyway, it'll come to me, it'll come to me. Um, <clears throat> so you had the Roaring Twenties, and the dance was so different. The dance was so different. It was like, you know, because these little things were just, you know, yeah. The, the, and the 1960s uh, was called the Swinging Sixties. It was called the Swinging Sixties because you'd have the twist, right? Let's do the twist again, like we did last summer, right? And um, so... Each decade means something, right? Um, <coughs> okay, and so um, <coughs> yesterday night I was listening to a couple of my favorite like old time hits, you know, like um, <coughs> Walking in Memphis. Oh, dun, 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 dun. Walking in Memphis. Oh, I love that stuff, you know? And then um, I was listening to... Um, on the midnight train to Georgia, Gladys Knight. You know, all of this stuff is just so good. You know, just listening to the decades that passed and the and the the mantles that were just given and and the and the significance. You know how the world moved, um, <clears throat> and now we're in the Roaring Twenties. That is the decade that we're living in. And how amazing is this? That the Jewish decade start coincided with the Gregorian calendar decade start because last year uh, was 57, 80. And then in that was September. And then January, we became 20, 
20. So we both coincided with a decade start, right? So the Jewish calendar, the decade is the 80s. <laughs> and we are the 20s, right? And so that the decade there is called Pei. P-E-H. Pei. And what Pei means is mouth. How amazing is that? The roaring 20s. When you, when you say roaring, what what... What's the part of the body that, yeah, it's the mouth, right? It's the mouth. It's the roaring 20s, right? So what happened was <clears throat> 80 coincided with 20, and 80 in the Jewish letter is pay. Pay, or we might, we might say P, you know? That is the letter. And pay means mouth. It means voice, it means breath of God, it means breath of life. And what is it in the 20s that we now hear? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. The t-shirt, right? I can't breathe. And what is it that we're experiencing now? The shutting of the mouth, right? With the covering of the mask, the visors, all right? Why? Because they, you know, this airborne momentary, you know, affliction you know, can, can come through the inhalation. And isn't this amazing that the opposition from the enemy has come in a year where 5780 coincides with the Gregorian 2020, meaning the roaring 20s, and pay, which is the Hebrew letter for the eight, 80s, which means mouth, which means breath of God, which... And then we see unfolding before us the enemy going, no, you will be shut. Your mouth will be shut. Can you see the spiritual significance here? Exactly. There is so much, but that is why it's so important for us to follow the Jewish calendar, to follow the seasons as well as the times. <laughs> seasons. Yeah. Exactly. Having two calendars definitely is a plus. So... I want, I want to explain to us, what does Rosh Hashanah mean? Okay, first of all, let's try and say it. Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. Say that. Rosh Hashanah. Okay. Okay, and um, how do you say um, Happy New Year in Jewish? No, he knows all of this stuff. Yeah, he's pretty, uh, he's pretty good at this stuff, but... Um, and I've forgotten it as well. If you know how to say Happy New Year in uh, Rosh, in uh, Hebrew, please just type it into Facebook, all right? No, 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 it's something else. Muzzle top, no, no. Muzzle top, no. You have to ask your rabbi. <laughs> that sounds great. Mm. I want to go into what Rosh Hashanah is, okay? Did you know that Rosh Hashanah, which is the new year, the new Jewish year, all right, is also called the day of the sounding of the shofar, means the feast of trumpets. So Rosh Hashanah, feast of trumpets, the day of remembrance, the day of judgment, they all mean the same thing, exactly the same thing, okay? Each of these names, though, signifies important aspects behind the divine purpose in designing the change to a new civil calendar year. So the Feast of the Blowing of Trumpets is also known as the Day of an Awakening Blast. Okay? Get that jazz on, people. Get the jazz on, streaming through your 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 system, especially gospel jazz, just get it flooding your airways because it is the feast of trumpets. This is the only time where the shofar is blasted. The shofar is, I don't know whether you've seen it, but it's the ram's horn 
isn't it? It's a horn of a ram, right? And only certain people can play this, right? And it's, it's played and it goes like that. And it's just amazing, this thing. It just, you know, and you, this is the time to do that. It's the feast of the blowing of trumpets. What, what instrument is it the feast of, kids? Tambourine? Is it the feast of the tambourine? Is it the feast of the banana? Get our praise on. Get your praise on. It is the roaring sound. Take that mask off. Not in public, but I mean privately, okay? In your houses. Take it off. Roar the sound of God out there. Blast the praise and worship. Get that trumpet sounding and ringing in your ears. <laughs> yeah, if you've sat close to too many speakers in your lives, you may have a ringing sound in your titness, I think it's called. Yeah, but I'll tell you, it, get it? It's, it is now the time of sound. So, Rosh Hashanah is also the day of the sounding of the shofar or the day of the awakening blast okay and in ephesians 5 14 to 17 let's turn to that let's turn to ephesians 5 Uh, verses 14 to 17. Okay, so it says here, Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the lord is and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation but be filled with the spirit the new wine speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord giving thanks always for all the things to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ submitting to one another in the fear of of God okay so you know we can see Paul associating the awakening blast of the shofar with repentance for our sin when we get that praise on when we acknowledge the goodness of God when we say and declare and decree who God is in this time in our lives in in our city we will be brought to repentance because in view of God's mercy, that's what it says, in view of God's mercy, Hebrews 12, in view of God's mercy, I will offer my body as a living sacrifice. That's what happens when you see the goodness, the glory, the splendor, the wonder of God. You know what? It's like looking at something so amazing that you think, whoa. Everybody say, whoa. whoa. Oh, come on, do a rock and roll one. Like, whoa, rock and roll is for the Lord, okay? I'm telling you, people, we're going to paint the town red in the blood of Jesus. Rock and roll is for Jesus. Rap is for Jesus. Everything that the Lord, everything is, the, is of the Lord. And everything in the world is of the Lord's. And, you know, uh, let, let's just declare that right now. And where the enemy has taken hold of it into his camp, we're going to take it back in Jesus' name. All right. So anyway, when we see this, whoa, guess what that means? That means, Lord, you're so amazing. 180 billion species. Hello. Each one with its own design. Hello. What? 
interplanetary movement. I can't believe that the psalmist knew that the... Did you know, did, did you know that um, we thought the world was flat at one point? But it's not. It's round, isn't it? And uh, if anybody didn't know that, yes, it's round. <laughs> Penny drops. Okay, pin drop silence. But, you know, now, can you tell me, in the solar system... Uh, does the sun go round the earth? No. What happens? Yes, Ethan and Hannah. What happens in the solar system? Like in, in the travel of the solar system. Did you know that the earth is called a satellite? Why is that? Because it orbits the the sun and there is a psalm in here that actually says that and I'm just shocked like how did the psalmist know it's because that you know the the bible is living and breathing right it's a it's the word of God it's a double-edged sword but it is God breathed um the psalmist is someone who wrote a psalm there are many. So if you're in the book of Psalms, which is one of the 66 books of the Bible, the psalmist could have been David. The psalmist could have been Solomon. The psalmist could have been Asaph. The psalmist could have been Ethan. Whatever. The, but there are many psalmists. Um, you know, I think even Miriam, um, you know, <clears throat> Hannah's, Hannah's cry to the Lord for, for a baby called Samuel. You know, all of that is written. I tell you, the psalmist could be the priests, the Levites, yeah? Any one of those guys. So, in this moment of wow, it says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectively. Oh, sorry, circumspectly. Not as fools but as wise. What is wise? Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. What does redeeming the time mean? Get it back, because the time just runs, my friends. Time just runs. It's like trying to hold water. Impossible. Redeem the time, because the days are evil. How many of us thought, if I knew COVID was coming in 2020, I would have played my, my previous years back a lot better? Who thought of that? I did. I thought, my goodness, my travel, right? My, my ability to go and see people, my uh, ability to, to uh, you know, build the church digitally and, uh, and the team, you know, build the ministry how many i'm sorry i hope i'm not the only one but you know the days are evil we have to redeem the time okay if you think 2020 and covid19 is like the worst and that's it you know apocalypse end think again okay still we have time to redeem the time still we should be redeeming our time because the days are evil therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the lord is and do not be drunk with wine so being unwise is not knowing the will of the lord simply put who is a fool the one who does not know the will of the lord and is not do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation but be filled with the Spirit. Because when you're filled with the Spirit, you'll start to speak to one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. I know that there will be a filling of the Holy Spirit going on when each of you starts sharing the word of God to each other when each of you starts sharing the psalms with each other, when each of you, when that happens, be grateful that you've received that and be thankful that the Holy Spirit is 
on the move. So this wow moment, okay, is not only put the trumpet sounds on, put the jazz on, put the praise on, put, the, put your sound on, okay? It's not all about that, but it is also about the fact that repentance is so important. Ethan, what does repentance mean? Okay, so what about repentance for sins? What does that mean? Uh, Hannah, what does repentance for sins mean? Okay, I got a two and I got a mmm. Okay, because they're very holy. They're holier than thou. Okay, <laughs> they do not sin. They do not make a wrong move apart from throwing earrings in the rubbish bin. They do not have anything wrongeth in their lifeeth. Okay? Repentance is saying sorry and turning around from the way that you were living. Doing a UE, not a donut. I've been watching how, uh, you know, there's this Rust to Riches program on Netflix. And um, they take old cars, like, you know, the Ford something or other and the Ford something or other. And then they, they, they really bling it out. You know, they kind of really, and they have like names for each of these things, you know, like, yeah, this is going to be a, a, a rod, a power rod or something. Or this is, that means... No, they actually take the gear out and put an actual rod in there. Oh, my goodness. And then they, like, beef up the wheels. And then, like, they totally, like, you know, I don't know, like, what's the word? What's the word? They customize it. Exactly. And, you know, so th- th- um, what was I saying before that, though? Right. Yes. How did that link? <laughs> God only knows how that linked. But anyway, so repentance, okay, is saying sorry. It's turning around. It's doing a UE. That's it. So in this program, this this girl does a donut with the car, and that's when you just like skid like that in one spot. Okay, don't do that at home. Don't, very dangerous. Okay, and you know, she did it in a very big space. Okay, and she did it with this, um, with this little, little sort of moped, <laughs> not even a car. Okay, so a U-turn. Repentance is turning the other way. So my friends, redeem the time. Okay, Rosh Hashanah is a time to reflect. All right, weigh up that sin and say, Lord, take it in Jesus' name. Make me clean. Hannah said, Lord, I don't have the cleanest of hands and the purest of hearts. Because I always say to her, Hannah, if you're going to help me cook, have you got a clean hands? Have you got a pure heart? I always say that to them. I said, Ethan, if you're going to empty the dishwasher, have you got clean hands and a pure heart? I, is it time to eat? Uh, yes, it is time to eat, but have you got clean hands and a pure heart? That's what I always say to them. <laughs> yeah. I've got a big gob and an empty stomach. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> okay, but yeah. And so Hannah said, Lord, and because I've drummed this into her so much, she goes, Lord, I don't have the cleanest hands. I don't have the purest heart foot, but can you do me this favor? And Hannah, did you say sorry to the Lord for losing your earrings? Yeah. And Hannah repented. And I repented for being, um, uh, you know, careless and um, not responsible for what she was given and being distracted. And so repentance is a gift. Repentance is a gift. How many people 
how many people can say, right, that without an offering, without an offering, they can be made whole? No. Jesus is our offering. His blood shed on the cross, okay, takes away our sins. And I said to Hannah, Hannah, you must remember, you personally don't have the cleanest of hands and the purest of hearts. But because of what Jesus did on the cross, because of the whipping that he got, because of the, 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 the trials and tribulations that he went through, because of the shame and the, and the indignation, he took all the wrath of God upon himself so that we, through the belief in him, may be made whole and have the cleanest hands and the purest heart. So in this Rosh Hashanah plant, you must, we must, repent. Because, first of all, just awaken, awaken to the desire of God. Awaken to the knowledge of God. Awaken to the presence of God. And I'm telling you, you'll be on your knees repenting. Traditionally, it is a day for initiation and renewal. Say renewal. For reconciling oneself to God and to one's fellow man. So it is not only reconciliation to God, but it is also reconciliation to fellow man. It is a place where we, we remove offense. What is offense? Offense is being disgruntled, disappointed, uh, dejected, rejected, hurt. Um, what's the other word? What, what are the other words like, you know, for offense? All of that causes offense, bitterness, everything like that, where someone has wronged you. Someone has wronged us, we go into offense. But, you know, Hash, Rosh Hashanah, don't let it go by. Don't let it go by tonight without saying, Lord, forgive me, and blessing those who've cursed you. It is easy to love those who love you. But the Lord says it is the hardest thing to love your enemies. This is a new year. We don't need the baggage. We don't need the baggage. And for, for Sean here, it's, it's, it's a big year for him. You know, and she's come at a time which is very significant in the spiritual calendar. Very, very significant. When was she born? Right. Exactly. So that's lead up to the new year. You know, Rosh Hashanah. And it's also the divine remembrance. Several books are opened by God on this day. One being the book of remembrance. Let's see Malachi 3.16. In Malachi 3.16, God opens the book of remembrance. It also ties in with the judgment and rewarding of belie believers. Okay? So the Lord remembers what you've done for him. This is a day of reckoning where the weighing of what you've done for him that has remained silent, that has remained under a bowl, that has remained secret, will shine for your glory. Because I tell you, it's the day of remembrance. You remembering God's faithfulness. You remembering that every promise is a yes and amen. And you remembering that he is true to his word. But also that he is going to open the book of remembrance and see. Ah, Reuben, I see. I remember. Son, son, I remember. I remember what you did. I remember the toil. I remember the commitment. 
I remember you laid aside other great things you could have done and you chose to do service for me. You chose me. Son, I know it takes miles to drive from where I live to, to where, you know, the church was, but you did it, son. You got in your car, you, you packed your guitar, and you got in, and you were committed, and you were, uh, you, you were relevant, and you gave it all. Son, I remember. Daughter, I remember what you did. And you know what? I was just thinking, God likes every part of us. Every part of us. Ethan does something, he goes, bye. Like, he doesn't say bye normally. He goes, bye. Okay. I love it. It's so cute. It's so cute. And now they do this new thing. It's like, you know. I'm like, what is that? And again, it's the Ariana Grande. You know, I'm like, what on earth? You don't even have long hair. <laughs> yeah, you might need to have a bit of hair to do it, okay? But, <laughs> um, but yesterday, I saw this guy with very long hair. Oh, my goodness, in Walthamstow. That guy had so much long hair. It's beautiful. The hair was beautiful. But he wore it with a, but he, but he wore it with a beard. Um, <laughs> and you know, Hannah does the cutest thing. She she has always, and I'm telling you, always, one leg of her trousers up, and the other leg of her trousers will be normal. I said, Hannah, how does that always happen? And it's always the left leg that seems to go up. I don't know what she does, but it always, and she goes, yeah, mum, you know, that's the way I like it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and so now, you know, before it used to irritate me, but guess what? Now I, I think it's cute. I think because you know what? That, that, that's her identity. She did it again. Oh. <laughs> Today she was behaving, I think. But she does this this thing, and um, she and sometimes you know she speaks very, you know, really amazing things, and I love that about her. You know, the Lord loves the way that you put your your hair behind your ears, or He loves the way that you rub your eyes, or He loves the way that you, um, you know, uh, get up in the morning. He loves everything about you. When you are a father or mother to a child you'll start to appreciate that their little identity their little quirks the, the little things that make them them and not nobody else and you know what the book of remembrance is one of several books <laughs> Shabba Several books. It's one of several books opened by God on this day. The book of remembrance is a time where the Lord remembers. Can you remember? Can you remember that the lady who was caught in sin? And can you remember that she went and lay before the Lord Jesus at his feet and wiped his uh, wiped his feet with her hair and choicest perfume. And he said, she will be remembered. She will be remembered. The Lord is no debtor to man. The book of remembrance is one of several books being opened by God on this day. Being opened. The day of remembrance was and is a day for Israel to remember God, who he is and all that he does. And in, in reciprocity, God remembers his people. It is also on this, this day that the book of life is opened 
at which time God holds a trial. That's why it's also called the Day of Judgment, because it was known as a time when, heaven, when the heavenly court sits to review each person's life. How amazing is that? We thought we were the ones who started all this New Year's resolution. Let me just do a new year, new me. Let me go to the gym now. Oh, oh, oh. All this stuff. Uh, no. Okay. Listen. It is also on this day that the book of life is opened. It is a time when the heavenly court sits to review each person's life. Obviously, repentance then becomes extremely important in association with this feast. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice and of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. Of course, in this scripture, the blowing of trumpets is clearly associated with Christ's second coming. But it should also remind us of the need to awaken and repent. This is a mega year. There is a train bound for revival. So I want to end with... what the Hebrew letters mean. So 5781 jumble up to spell some interesting variations. Five is Tav, say Tav. Tav. Seven is Shin. Shin. Eight is, can you remember what I said? Eight was Pei. And one is Aleph. Okay, so you put Tav, Shin, Pei, and a left, and you get Tashba. Say Tashba. Tashba contains the root for Ashba, which is a quiver. Do you know what a quiver is? Who knows Robin Hood? Who knows where arrows live on your person? It's in the quiver. A quiver is a little container that holds all the arrows. Then you take your bow out, Okay, yeah. You take you take the the quiver. You take the the bow. You take the, the 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 arrow out of your quiver and you stretch your bow. Poof. Or poof. okay. Now, basically, the tashba is uh, contains the root ashpa, which is a quiver, which is the ancient symbol of a confident warrior. Say, I'm a confident warrior. I am a confident warrior. Okay, say, and, and, and it says, and in later literary history, it means a scholar. Okay? Say, I'm a scholar. The psalmist employs this rare root when he declares, happy is he who has filled his quiver with these. That means children. Okay? But when, you, when your quiver is empty, believe me, you are dead. Believe. Okay? When your quiver is full of arrows, believe you have some defense. Right? You are a warrior. You've done your work. You've filled your quiver with the tools, with the sharpening of arrows, and you're ready. In modern Hebrew, Ashpa has, become, has, has come to mean, and you would never guess this, you would never guess this. But what did Hannah throw her earrings in? Where did she throw her earrings? In the bin. The modern Hebrew ashpa means garbage or rubbish. It's pure garbage, mate. No, rubbish. What are you on about? Right? Garbage, rubbish. Trash, as the Americans say, trash. The dumpster. Okay. So what that means is, let's dump last year's waste. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Believe. Yeah. You have to dump it. You have to get rid of it. You have to trash it. You have to can it. 
can it, all the hate, all the offense. We don't need it. All the sins, all the wrong things, all the wrong motives. I was called up on a wrong motive. I said, oh, you know what, um, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to make a, a cake or something like that, you know, blah, blah. And I was called up and, hang on a minute, are you making a cake in competition to your sister? Or I was like, oh, okay then. But really there's no competition because she's so fantastical, you know. So, you know, listen, trash the motives that are not of God. Let's trash the thoughts that are not of God. Let's trash this garbage, just can it all the offense, all the hurt. Let's, let's can all the judgment we have on everyone. We don't need it. This is Rosh Hashanah. This is New Year. This is 5781. People, we are entering the first year of the new decade. We don't need the rubbish of the last. So Tashba, when jumbled up, reads tishaf, which is to inhale. The Hebrew verb lishof means to aspire after something, indicating the will to achieve. Ashav is the Aramaic word for a magician and appears in the biblical book of Daniel in recent history. Ashav is the acronym for Arabic for the Palestinian Liberation Organization. Additionally, eshetef, a further combination of the letters 5781 means to share or partner up. So perhaps, as if by magic, we can emerge from this last year's plague and in the Middle East achieve a peace through with Israel's neighbor in the Gulf, which will eventually put the rest, put to rest the unrest in the Arab-Israeli conflict. The four letters split and take, taken separately yield 57 and 81 which spell zan, which means sustenance, and af, which means nostrils. Keywords representing the economy and the breath of life. Both have been attacked through coronavirus. The economy, 57. The breath of life, 81. Both being attacked by the coronavirus, claiming lives through respiratory disease and severely threatening the economy. Let us hope that in the coming year there will be a reprieve from the economy through a better state of health for us all. 5781. Five represents an eye. You need to look and be watchful. Seven represents the plow. We need to take action. We can't stand on the sides. We have to get in with the evangelism. We have to get in and work the field. We have to be workers of the field. We can't ignore. We have to get into the action. We need to take action. Eight represents a fence. We now need a new source of sustenance. We need to be separate, a separation of kingdom people. And one represents an ox. We need to be strong and we need to lead. You add eight and one, what do you get? Nine. Nine are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Fruit bearing year. This is a fruit-bearing year. And nine times nine is also 81, which is the year that we're in. And that is double for your? Exactly. Nine times nine is also 81. And eight plus one is nine as well, because we're in the year five, seven, eight, one, 81. 81. Eight plus one is? Nine times nine is? 81. So double for your trouble. Absolutely. Come on. Okay? This is the new Jewish year. It is the year that the baby is born. Have you been carrying a baby? Have you been in gestational period? It is the year the baby is born. It is the year dreams are established. The fulfillment, the greatest hour of the church is upon us. Be ready with the new wineskins for the new wine. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord.